Mark showed up at a social centre um, in Nottingham where I was living. He started coming to campaign meetings there and he started coming to the bar and the cafe and each other and we, we got into a relationship. And unbeknown to you, he was actually an undercover officer who was there to place you and people you knew under surveillance because you were an environmental activist. Did you have any indication whatsoever? So, Mark, I mean, what, what the, the ruling today, the, the, the Investigatory Powers Tribunal has said, Mark was sent in to the community centre on what was basically a fishing expedition. Um, so he was there just meeting people and hoovering up intelligence about everybody and anybody who was involved in protest activities there. Um, I didn't know that. I thought that he was my friend and my lover and later my housemate. Um, he, he, was, he was very, very deeply involved in our lives for seven years. And Kate, it wasn't until five years later that you discovered he was actually an undercover police officer. How did you discover this? So after Mark and I separated, he began a relationship with a close friend of mine, which lasted for six years. Um, she's known as Lisa in the public inquiry, and she discovered his identity. So, so uh, I, that's how I found out was through, through her uncovering the truth. Um, Kate, the tribunal found that the Met's claims that undercover officers knew sexual relationships were banned were materially undermined by the sheer frequency uh, with which the man in question, in, in your case, did conduct sexual relationships with either questions being asked without either questions being asked or action being taken by senior officers. We are driven to the conclusion that either senior officers were quite extraordinarily naive, totally unquestioning, or chose to turn a blind eye to conduct, which was certainly in the case of um, Mark that you refer to, useful to the operation. And we're hearing about that today in the case of Sarah Everard and the man that's been convicted of her murder. Is the police themselves turning a blind eye to conduct that seemed seems low-level crime, if you like. The, the police have, in, in this case, they've tried all along to say this was a rogue officer, this was a bad apple, and it, it's not. The, there's a large number of Metropolitan Police officers serving undercover officers who have deceived women into uh, relationships, and... Uh, I think there's 27 women in the undercover policing inquiry because they had relationships with undercover police. And it's this same attitude of trying to avoid accountability and not taking seriously the fact that there are sexual predators within their ranks. And it, it, the tribunal has ruled that, that the senior officers knew about these relationships and adopted an approach of don't ask, don't tell, because it was useful to the operations and that the Metropolitan Police showed a worrying lack of concern for the impact of these abuses on the women who they put yeah. at risk. Yeah, Kate, you were deceived and you entered into a relationship without knowing the full facts about someone you were in a relationship with and you found that in 2010. We're now in 2021. You've won this landmark case. You know, you're a pioneer in that sense. Tell me what you've had to fight against to get to this point. Because as you said, the police haven't in this case taken it seriously. And as the tribunal said, they sort of turned a blind eye because it helped operations. So in some senses, I am a pioneer. Um, I didn't start this case alone. There were eight women brought the original case. Like I say, there's another 27 women now fighting on these issues in the undercover policing inquiry. Um, but it goes even broader than that because the findings of the tribunal also talk about the police uh, lack of concern for collateral intrusion into the lives of people that their officers are coming into contact with. And they actually rule that the operations themselves were unlawful and unnecessary in a democratic society because 
they were basically targeting our rights to protest. So, yes, in some ways I'm a pioneer, but there, there, there is a, a large, much wider issue. It goes far beyond me. Um, and, uh, and it's taken 10 years. Yeah, 10 years to get to this point um, for you to win your case. And Kate, just finally a word about trust in the police force. It's the big question today, particularly for women. Uh, what would you have to say about it? I think, I feel that um, we had the finding that the police are institutionally racist. Uh, the Daniel Morgan inquiry recently found the Metropolitan Police to be institutionally corrupt. The IPT today has found that the undercover operations were guilty of sexist discrimination. I feel that the Metropolitan Police is an organisation beyond redemption. I think there needs to be a fundamental rethinking of the powers that they are given, of the way that they are structured. I don't see that they've made any great progress with the institutional racism, the institutional corruption. I don't have any confidence that they're going to target, target the culture of misogyny that exists within the police. Um, Kate, really good to talk to you today um, and congratulations on winning your Kate. Kate Wilson there, environmental activist who won her case um, against the Metropolitan Police for breaches of her human rights after entering unknowingly into a relationship uh, with an undercover Metropolitan Police officer.